Today, Evan and I are out searching for the story behind the wreck of the first steel tugboat to ever work the Great Lakes. Built in 1873 and discovered in 1987, she is also the first shipwreck to have a Michigan historical marker placed near her, which tells the story of her final voyage. Departing Port Sanilac, we're headed out to an area known as the Sanilac Shores Underwater Preserve with double action dive charters and anchor bay scuba. Underwater preserve out here in Lake Huron borders up against Canada and contains over a dozen shipwrecks, including the tugboat we're diving today called the Sport. Pulling against a significant surface current work our way over to the mooring line and begin our descent. It's difficult to see anything at first. Visibility at the surface is little more than 10 feet or 3 meters. But as the wreck of the sport comes into view, the visibility opens up to roughly 25 feet or 8 meters. Sitting upright and leaning on her starboard side, the sport rests on the muddy bottom of the lake floor in roughly 45 feet 14 meters of water. Beginning our search for the historical marker that tells the story of her sinking, we start down the starboard side of the wreck. At only 57 feet long, the sport is one of the smallest wrecks in the Sanilac Shores Underwater Preserve. Sitting alongside the wreck is one of the tugboat's most iconic elements, the ship's wheel. Moving aft along the length of the wreck, we begin to explore the main deck. Passing what looks like might be the boiler that generated steam to power the once mighty tug head over to where the pilot house presumably once stood. Here it's easy to imagine a fireman on the crew shoveling coal into the fire that would have heated the circulating boiler water to produce steam which ultimately propelled the ship forward. Just before the aft deck we discover another prominent feature of the 19th century tugboat, the tow bit. The two vertical posts at the stern here once used to secure the lines of another vessel in distress or when working to bring another ship into port. Descending slightly, we round the stern of the wreck and locate the large rudder that, like many other wooden features on the steel tugboat, is perfectly preserved in the cold lake water. Still looking for the historical marker, which is said to be just off the port side of the wreck, we pass the four-bladed prop. It's no longer attached to the tug, but is clearly visible in the muddy bottom. Looking up, I see Evan has located the marker that tells the final story of the sport. On the afternoon of December 13, 1920, when it departed Port Huron, bound for Harbor Beach, the tug fought heavy seas, and by 6 p.m., was taking on more water than the pumps could handle. Near Lexington, the seasick fire tender crawled back into his bunk. The unattended fire died, the boat lost steam, and the pumps quit. The six-man crew abandoned the ship in a lifeboat around 11 p.m. when waves crashed over the deck. The crew washed ashore near Lexington, cold and exhausted, but alive. Sports sank and was not discovered again until 1987. For more on diving the Great Lakes, check out our video playlist or check out the video on how we create 3D models here at the end. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time underwater.